Yes, uh, good morning all of you, distinguished dignitaries. I am Shukumar Ganachari, Coordinator, Internal Quality Assurance Cell, Saundara Institute of Management and Science. A warm welcome to International Web NASA. On, uh, at the very outset, on behalf of our institution, I extend my greetings and uh, indeed, uh, you know, whenever uh, the crisis happens, we always remind uh, to take the shelter or help of intellectuals and intelligible people. Keeping this in mind, the Department of Business Administration has taken initiation to organize uh, this international webinar, redefining the uh, strategic planning and for sustainable growth during crisis. Uh, it's a great honor to you, uh, Dr. Jawahar Suri Siti, sir. A warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. I also extend uh, the honor uh, the resource person, Dr. Vishwanath Kokanda, sir. A warm welcome to you, sir. Good morning, sir. I also take this opportunity to welcome our CEO, Sri Kirtan Kumar. A warm welcome to you, sir. I extend uh, my uh, the heartfelt greetings to uh, Professor Sarumangala, Madam. Welcome to this session, Madam. Thank you. And uh, I also take this opportunity to welcome our beloved principal, sir, for this uh, international webinar. A warm welcome to you, sir. I welcome the Professor Giri, sir, head of the department, business administration, and uh, participants from across the globe. A warm welcome to all of you. A very, very welcome to this international webinar. Now, it's a, uh, a great honor to, to take this opportunity and uh, welcome our CEO, sir, for uh, his inaugural address. Sir, over to you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir, please. Very good morning, one and all. It's an honor and a great privilege to be part of uh, international webinar on rede redefining strategic planning for sustainable growth during crisis. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to go with a small process of saying, uh, I mean, the meaning of strategic planning is uh, the planning of strategies and implementing means planning of strategies and implementing them to achieve organizational goals. And it starts by asking oneself a simple questions like, what are we doing? Should we continue to do or change our product line or the way we are working? What is the impact of social, political, you know, technological and other environmental factors of our operations? So likewise, uh, it is very important during this crisis to mull over and uh, think of what has to be done for the future. So likewise, transformation of knowledge should happen at uh, regular intervals and is the sole root of sustainable growth in every field. It is my strong belief that knowledge alone rescues during crisis. To meet out and face the challenges, we require the support of uh, great minds. So we have invited Dr. Jawahar Suri Sati, sir, and also Vishwanath Kokanda, sir. Saundar Education Trust encourages to explore the intellectual capabilities, knowledge, motivation from time to time. And we make serious attempt to create congenial environment for academic enrichment. enrichment. I deeply, deeply acknowledge the efforts of the principal, Dr. Suresh Agadi, sir, and the efforts of uh, the HOD, Dr. Uh, uh, dear Giri, sir, the HOD of business, uh, Bachelor's in Business Administration. So you have been making sincere efforts in capacity building among our learners. And the thought, I look forward to a similar kind of approach in the days to come. So I would like to appreciate the in department in inviting internationally acclaimed resource person for the international webinar. It is my humble appeal to Dr. Jawahar Suri Sati, sir, to kindly guide us also and also support in uh, developing taking our institution to be a university some days 
similar kind of support i expect from dr vishwanath kokanda sir i thank you both for being for accepting our invitation to be resource persons for the day so i wish this webinar a great success and all the participants who are being uh, present around the world to have great insights from this uh, international webinar thank you have a great day thank you thank you very much uh, ketan kumar sir uh, it's a great honor to uh, bring to notice to this august gathering sir Biba, B, department of business administration recently has conducted uh, two surveys one on atmanirbhar bharat and uh, it really uh, received overwhelming response across the globe more than 25000 people responded to the atmanirbhar bharat and uh, it also conducted national education policy 2020 and received more than uh, 12000 response on uh, new education policy uh, we would be very glad uh, sir if we guide us to take this research or, uh, at the next level sir and uh, it's my honor to introduce uh, uh, dr jawasur is sir to this august gathering sir is one of the a uh, renowned uh, internationally acknowledged uh, research scholar uh, did his post graduation and phd in psychology and uh, you know the gave more than 1500 uh, you know the uh, uh, lectures across the globe and uh, sir has widely connected uh, more than 76 nations uh, for his uh, you know the uh, creating awareness among uh, you know younger generation and understanding their capabilities sir received a doctorate award from the washington university and also he received a honorary doctorate from columbia university sir is a mentor to the queensland university australia it's a great pleasure sir to invite you and uh, you know the hand over the, this uh, session uh, to you sir please uh, uh, we are very much eager to uh, uh, you know the enlighten through your uh, intelligible sir thank you very much sir over to you sir thank you and are there students also in the audience yes sir okay fantastic so i'll uh, align the whatever i speak to the students majorly uh, so it's a very uh, unforeseen situation that we are caught in right now uh, and for whatever 20 25 minutes i speak uh, i will take examples of three kinds because uh, educational institutions are disturbed uh, industries are disturbed which are in the manufacturing sector and then there are service industries also which are disturbed so we might have uh, a different set of problems for each of these uh, during a situation like this so the strategic planning that is needed for all these three might be different Uh, so uh, let's see and uh, uh, when i say educational institutions i, I will also include uh, governments because they also will need to have some strategic planning to go ahead in time uh, so uh, let's let's start see uh, uh, when we have a pandemic uh, like situation like the current one uh, uh, we are unable to plan to the extent that we should the reason being that we don't know when this ends and once we know uh, that we have to go ahead or not to go ahead then the strategic planning should uh, consider a lot of lot of things let's let's take for example i am running a restaurant uh, and restaurant uh, the government has given permission that you can open restaurant but you will have to maintain social distancing so now how does my strategy go one the number of seats in the restaurant will reduce because of the social distancing that means the turnover per hour uh, in restaurant parlance uh, will reduce so how do i offset it one second is uh, what do i do so that more and more people because food is not compulsory heating out is not compulsory food is compulsory but i might resist going outside because of this pandemic like situation so what do i do uh, so one uh, what restaurants are doing is they have planned it one they are sending messages on how they are trying to keep uh, the premises clean so that guests are welcome and they are safe so this is one thing that they are doing so what the strategy planning says here is 
the media awareness that they have to create uh, has to be such that it should allow uh, customers to feel that even if they come to a restaurant, they are not unsafe, uh, which is the major concern. The second is, how much should I spend, which is the financial obligation of a restaurant, expecting customers to come after they do a media pitch. Once they do a media pitch and nobody comes, there is a problem because uh, uh, I spend, let's say, a lakh of rupees and expect that on Christmas there will be around uh, 500 people coming to my restaurant. Expecting that 500 people will come to the restaurant is a presumption. Now, this presumption uh, is, if it is not based on anything, that my previous experiences say that last uh, Christmas it was 500, so this year it will be 500. See, that is not last year, Christmas it was not a pandemic. Uh, so now we will have to do a survey. Uh, so the people who, uh, the database that you have, we call up and we ask, sir, how are you uh, this Christmas? How are you placed? We are offering this, 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 this Christmas. And you will get from a data of, let's say, 100 or 200 or 300, you will get 15, 20 positive responses. Multiply that by your uh, estimated this thing, and you will find that, yes, instead of 500, there are only 200 people. Or so you will have to cut down your financial obligation towards media based on this. Uh, so this is something that we will need to do. And I, I'm just... Um, enumerating on various aspects that you will need to see let's let's assume one more thing when i'm talking of the restaurants you can also say that we can reach out to you and provide our food at your home so that's a door delivery kind of a system which zomato or all these people do but then what has happened is uh, many customers might come and say we don't believe in zomato because they we, they have a huge fleet uh, they, they, we are not aware there is a lot of things that are circulating on WhatsApp which says we don't know uh, that they eat our food while delivering and all those things. So can we have a fleet of our own of three, four, five people at any point of time who can deliver food uh, to them? So that's a reach out again. So all these come and become a part of uh, the system where the delivery of food, the preparation of food, the cleanliness, etc. will come under operations. The media budget uh, or any other budget that is done for hygiene, uh, the, uh, all these come under the finance and the marketing part is reach out, reaching out to people, talking to them and all this. So these are three major things that you need. Now, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, of how uh, without proper planning, if you are doing something, uh, only on the cut field that we 500 people will come and I spend a lack of a lack of rupees, what happens? So I was on a stage with uh, Mr. Kishore Viani, uh, the promoter of uh, Future Group or Big Bazaar, as you call it. So he was telling me, uh, he was telling the audience, not me, uh, that uh, he went to China. He keeps going around to see for to see products. Uh, for which he can buy. So he went to China and uh, in China he saw a heap of white shirts uh, with a production agent and they were around uh, 2 lakh shirts and each of them was available for 40 rupees. Uh, white shirts, full sleeves. So he said if I am, I have a chain of uh, departmental stores, uh, if I am able to sell this at even at 200 rupees, it's a 500% profit for me. Uh, and this 40 rupees was the shirts would reach India uh, to his uh, go down uh, at 40 rupees. So he thought it was a fantastic seal, he, he took it. This was way back when Big Bazaar had just started now. Uh, so he took it. And he said that this was purely a decision taken on gut. Uh, he, there was no survey uh, whether this demand would be there or not, but he took it because he thought it was a steal. When the uh, white shirts were distributed across the departmental stores and every week he takes an MIS from them, what is the movement of which goods? So he particularly saw that the white shirts were not moving. So then he went on to un understand from the store managers, what is it, why is it that the white shirts, 200 rupees for a shirt is very cheap. Why is it not moving? Then. Uh, they came up with an answer. Sir, the Indian middle class, which is our major customer 
or big bazaar believes that recurring cost is one important factor for buying clothes so when they go to a clothes store they will ask whether it is dry clean or hand wash this is one thing that ladies usually ask uh, and if it is dry clean that means the maintenance cost is higher in a white shirt if a red shirt or a black shirt like the one i am wearing uh, you wash it after two days let's say or two wears the white shirt gets dirtier earlier so the maintenance cost is higher it's only we see that leaders or school children they wear white uniforms otherwise usually we wear white shirts uh, but uh, uh, not to the regular uh, usage so the shirts were not so then he said ki unless we take our decisions or plan our decisions based on certain valid inputs and uh, this was not a valid input he bought shirts just out of gut ki 40 rupees mein mil raha why should i not buy it uh, and he said we should not do such mistake because it's okay for big bazaar 2 2 lakh shirts is not not very big so even if he sells it at 100 rupees uh, he would have made it cost uh, made it back but uh, he said that i made a decision thinking that i will be able to sell at 200 rupees so the whole financial planning went awry and this is something for students that you should learn that a man of the stature of kishor biyani makes a mistake just out of gut so strategic planning is not just gut uh, so don't go by your gut even if you are in a startup situation and there is a pandemic don't go by gut it's it's always better to do a survey to do a due diligence uh, whether this product is fit or not i will give you another example Uh, so in the other side of the coin is asian sky shop was the first satellite based shopping channel which we see now many are there but that was the first asian sky shop and one mr kurian used to be the ceo i used to be the vice president of z group uh, and z uh, asian sky shop was a z channel so what we did is we did a survey in that and we did a survey that in metro cities where shopping uh, satellite channels the maximum reach is in metro cities that time uh, so uh, in metro cities the young boys and girls who come to work and they are not able to afford daily going out and eating this was again way back in 97 98 uh, so the concept of going to a restaurant daily or buying food uh, that comes to my home was not there then so the young boys and girls used to cook their own food when they were alone in mumbai and mumbai it's 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 an expensive place it's not very cheap so what they we thought that how many such to uh, young boys and girls are there who want to eat rotis but don't eat rotis because they don't know how to make it roti is not easy to make you have to knead the dough you have to make that round uh, yeah, you have and you need to uh, what do you call that whatever uh, so you need to make those round shape things so what uh, we did this survey and we found that in mumbai there were at that time uh, around 10 lakh young boys and girls who wanted to make rotis eat rotis but could, did not so we didn't go to delhi uh, we just took the mumbai survey and started it so we made roti maker this was an invention at that time just make a round ball out of the dough uh, and just put it in the roti maker and press it that round shape roti comes out it made roti making very easier the first day we sold around 1 lakh pieces of roti maker on zdv asia sky shop so this is the kind of strategic planning that needs to be done to be able to yield results now coming back to the pandemic like situation in pandemic like situation going to uh, foresee what is going to happen let's say i go back to your either uh, educational institution uh, example or i go back to a restaurant example can you imagine where the school or the college or the restaurant all of them provide services which are absolutely personalized and can you imagine that if i go to a restaurant 
and I am told that I will be served food from a distance of six feet because that is the social distancing norm. So we cannot foresee such circumstances. Uh, how do I imagine that a waiter has uh, the capability to serve me from six feet or two meters? Uh, that means the tray has to have a handle which is at least five feet long. Uh, now this is something which we have not foreseen. Uh, and this is something what we need to understand. So what we have done, uh, we, what we will need to do is, we need to uh, find out uh, ways and means how. So what they did, they found three three things. This, this is again done in USA where the challenge was bigger. Uh, the number of uh, infected cases were bigger. So restaurants, they were allowed to open, but people were not coming in because they found that food was not safe. So I said, okay, uh, what do we do? So uh, we did a plan. The plan of action was, and this is innovative, the plan of action was, if you can get your food, come and sit in the restaurant. Uh, your food, food, they are not very, uh, they are not very comfortable having from outside. But they would have a beer or something which which they are okay with. Uh, so you can come with your food, sit in my restaurant. The AC and everything is working. The TV is there. Don't touch anything if you are not feeling safe. Don't have my food. But per hour, you have to pay me a dollar for using the premises. So my people are not sitting idle. So if I sell a bottle of water or a bottle of beer or whatever, or a bottle of soft drink, that is sale for me instead of sitting quiet. Plus, there is a change of environment for the person who is having food without having the food of the restaurant, which he feels is unsafe. So bring your own food, have it here in my restaurant. It defeats the purpose of a restaurant because they want to sell food. But they have strategized in such a way, they have planned it, that the empty premises along with the AC is incurring some frequent expenses. So why? how should I uh, see that these expenses come out? So they have planned it this way. So this is something huh, that makes better sense that during a strategic planning, you will need to find that if there is a resistance to come to the place, that means the whole purpose of the business is defeated. Uh, how do we see that people come and still do not need to take what they are supposed to take from the place because they are feeling unsafe. So you need to re-strategize your business. This is the new normal. You will have to think afresh. This which is known as a, in strategic planning terms, a restart button has been pressed due to the uh, pandemic. Uh, also, during this time, please understand that I will call this a, uh, especially for all management students, this is a very important concept, whether there is a pandemic or not. This is known as the coolest looking glass self. Uh, so this is a mirror in my hand, let's say. Uh, I will look at it from uh, my perspective and say, yes, my hand is, this mirror is uh, reflecting my face, which is a normal one. But when you are looking at it from a uh, coolest looking glass self, you should look at it from a customer's perspective. So suppose a steel manufacturer, uh, a steel manufacturer, he uh, is seeing that construction activity is not going, so steel is not selling. So what does he do? Uh, so he looks at the coolest looking glass self and says, okay, uh, in the mirror, I am seeing the customer's face. Uh, what does he want from a steel manufacturer? Okay, uh, so there are going to be queues because of the social distancing. So we are having to have queues in temples. We are going to have in public places queues. Uh, so there might be steel pipes, which might create this barricades for social distancing. So instead of the steel bars or TMT bars, as we call it, if I increase the production of square pipes and round pipes uh, and sell them to temples or public places, bus stands, etc., my sale of steel bars will reduce, but I will compensate by the sale of steel pipes. So school is looking glass self uh, at the time of any strategic planning is a very good mirror for user experience and this stands good for all of us uh, who plan uh, whether it is an education so in educational institution let's take an example of the education so in schools parents are not ready to send their children they think that this is a contagious disease and everybody thinks that i am clean the other person is not clean 
So even if you say there is a minimum touch policy, they will say, no, 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 no. I am not sending my child to school. I will not risk it. So in that case, what do you do? So what, what educational institutions have done? <laughs> One, they have started with online classes. That's fine. They have also started innovating. Uh, Let's, like for example, how see parent is not ready to pay the fees because he says he thinks that online education is not actual education. So if they think that the institutions are saving a lot of money. Uh, so we need to again plan strategically what is happening. So let's say I give them a case study for the MBA students that I am ready running an educational institution and in a pandemic, if I am taking online classes, what are the expenses that I am incurring? Let's, let's say I give a case study. The students come up with the case study themselves and they say the faculty cost is there. Uh, so that, that, that is almost 70-75% of the revenue that we earn is faculty cost. Uh, if for larger number of students, if an institution has, it comes down to 50%, but otherwise it's very huge. The operational cost, like the maybe AC of the director's room or some lights or something, but if you are running an online uh, class from, the, uh, from home, uh, obviously somebody is spending money somewhere. Uh, so even if the faculty himself is spending, or maybe sometimes the faculty would come to the institution to use the Wi-Fi, etc. So all those things. So try to take the message to the students and try try to make them understand that what are the expenses and let them do it themselves. Once this case study is solved and the students present it to uh, on the online platforms they will themselves realize that there are a lot of expenses. What you are asking uh, is not free. What you are uh, expending is not free. So what do we plan? One, we started saying that we, because parent is the major uh, decision maker in the, in the case of students. So how do we convince the parent? The case study the parent is not doing. So what we started doing is we started uh, involving the families. Uh, last time, I don't know whether I've given this example, if you go and see the papers, and uh, we have said Edu Takshari. Edu Takshari is something that I have created, and 11,500 families every Sunday would connect with me. 11,500 is a huge number. What we would do, because students were losing out during lockdown, I said, okay, let's play with the families. So we involved the families. What we did, so I sing a song, and I sing whatever song, the last uh, letter of that song, as in Antakshari, the last letter of the song, let's say it ends with na, then N is the last letter. The, one, the first family comes up with a word with N. So the, if the student is in class 2 or class 3, he will say N, say nose, whatever. Huh? If he is in a bigger class, he will say Nigeria. Uh, then he will say that capital of Nigeria, this, this is an African country. He send, spends two minutes on telling words. So that is knowledge acquisition for him. If there is something that he is not able to, the family can add, but the family is sitting there when they when we are playing. And then let's say Nigeria, he says, I A, but in Hindi it is year. So Nigeria, year. Year says that he starts another song. Then the, the last letter of that song is that for the next family, the word in which they can say anything. So Edith actually in the last lockdown, I think from May to May, June, July, August, September, October. Every week, we started with 200 families. We ended with 11,500 families by the time we reached May. And then I didn't have space to accommodate more families. What I am saying is, if you can plan in such a way for your businesses, wherein the stakeholders, all of them, see in, in the case of a, a school or college, the student is a stakeholder. The parent is also a stakeholder, unlike the other places. Uh, maybe in manufacturing, the client goes and buys it or whatever way. Uh, but in, in the case of college, the parent might not come, but he's a stakeholder. So this is a slightly different situation in the sense that uh, the, uh, the uh, stakeholders are many and we need to get to all of them. So the strategy has to be something where we involve the stakeholders. So there might be a, a family workshop like the one we are doing today uh, just for your students. Maybe we can do some family workshops where there is fun, entertainment, knowledge, parenting, 
uh, everything is there. So this is something which we need to strategically plan in this. I will also give the government side of it now uh, because the government is also uh, a part of and they do, do a huge amount of planning whether or not we understand it or not. So again, coming back to what you understand best, <laughs> online was going good, but most of the government schools didn't have the paraphernalia to do this. So again, when we sat on the planning table and looked at the cooling glass cell, the student who is my client in a government school who belongs to a uh, disadvantaged background or a rural area, he was saying to me in the mirror that I don't have internet connectivity, I don't might, might not have a mobile phone. Mobile phones they have uh, most of the time, but with geo, that access has increased. So what we did, we started innovating in the planning process itself. How do we do? So we started with in uh, Jammu Kashmir, we did Mahindra and Videocon gave us buses and uh, TVs and uh, players, video player, uh, VCDs, VCRs. And we started employing uh, young boys and girls, educated, unemployed uh, in uh, Jammu Kashmir. And one driver uh, who was also an educated boy and one uh, teacher used to go in the bus. The, teach, the bus was converted into a 20-seater uh, school. And then they, this was known as Gyamdan. And so this created employment for the young unemployed. They were, became teachers. They would go to a distant village, stay there for two days. The village used to support them with food. And they would give the education. So zero days of education to two days of education is what we started. And then the bus goes to the next village and then do, they do three days of education and then so, so on and so forth. So we took the school to home. Instead of the school, the students coming to the school. This is the first thing. The second thing we did, which was again good, was that we spoke to the single screen cinema halls, uh, which, which are there in rural areas still. Uh, they might not be multiplexes, but they are single screen. So we told them that you give this to us for one hour. And we called all the students of a particular class uh, during that period, maintaining social distance. Uh, we put them and we put the videos on the cinema hall uh, screens. So the students had cinema halls which were closed due to the pandemic. We used them for giving education. The third thing which we did was Loudspeakers which were used by mosques and temples in colonies and areas, we use them to do audio classes for children uh, which, which uh, were anyway lying vacant because temples and mosques were closed. So we have tried all these things after a lot of thought has gone into the disruptions that we can do and the available resources in those areas, depending upon the available resources in those areas. Because the terrain in Jammu and Kashmir does not allow us to have this loudspeaker solution uh, because the uh, houses are sparse in the area. In rural areas, they have the luxury on the hilltop, there will be one, there will be one at the bottom. So the loudspeaker might not reach out. So we use the bus. But otherwise, uh, we've tried to plan in such a way so that education, to whatever extent, even if to the, it is to the extent of 25%, we have tried to reach out. And I also request that when you teach your uh, uh, students, management students in particular, that resilience, uh, strategic resilience uh, is something uh, which we will need to understand. And the ability to foresee circumstances, for example, even if we, when we were the government of India, uh, when we were saying uh, that don't depend too much on China for medical equipment, this was said long back by us. But neither the US government nor the Indian government took heed of this. Now in a pandemic-like situation, all medical equipment, including ventilators, uh, so Mahindra and Mahindra is manufacturing ventilators, which they are car manufacturers. Can you imagine the strategic planning and the change in the product portfolio that would have gone through when Mahindra thought that they will ma manufacture ventilators or what uh, would have gone through the Tata boardrooms? Can we imagine? 
Similarly, small manufacturers started manufacturing and selling uh, sanitizers because nothing else was selling. Uh, that's why they were selling sanitizers, masks. So there is a planning that is happening everywhere uh, based on the demand supply scenario. Uh, because the supply chain disruptions are happening, uh, because movement of trucks is restricted, movement of anything is restricted in a lockdown, there are things that you will need to relook at and relook at and re, uh, re-strategize what is going to happen in a post uh, uh, or even during the pandemic and post pandemic. So the world would have changed drastically for us to understand whether we are going to go back fully offline in terms of education is something that we might doubt for the next six months at least it is not happening. So you will anyway go slowly from online to offline. So there will be a hybrid happening in between. Uh, which, which uh, the, uh, When I was talking of resilience, so today when we know that we can't get medical equipment from China, we have started manufacturing, we could have done that earlier also. So strategic resilience is being able to think in such a way that you can take hard decisions in your strategy. Uh, if I am not wanting to take med- see I am trying to find the easy way out. Uh, that if I, I used to buy uh, my Diwali lights uh, from China. Most of us were doing it. Even the Diyas were China, not Arden. So when they created a campaign that our army is fighting in the borders with China, then we realized we should not buy Chinese goods. So can we not have that strategic resilience to think ahead of time and say that if I am able to produce this, why should I buy from China? Yes. The major factor is when we should not, as management students, we should not be very uh, emotional in deciding anything because it does not give a proper perspective. So if I say I should not buy from China, why should I buy from China? They are fighting with me. That does not make a sound decision for me. If the Chinese goods are cheaper and the quality is better, what is it that I should strategize to make my goods as good as China? As the same price as China, then it is then it makes a valid decision. Yes, I should buy Indian goods. But sending it, selling it expensive and expecting people to buy it does not make sense. So now here, let's say Ardhan goods. Uh, I can say that that uh, Mazdoor or the Potter who is making these Ardhan wares, he is spending some amount. Of, see. Again, if you don't understand, I am selling 100 diyas for Diwali. If I am if I am earning, let's say, 100 rupees a day, and I want to earn 200 rupees a day by denouncing that you should not buy Chinese goods, that is not good strategy. The good strategy is, can I sell 200 diyas uh, uh, by reducing the price or reducing my margin? In the beginning, keep the margins same or less than uh, what it was earlier. And even in, in the beginning, if I earn 125 rupees, I am not double of 100. It's fine. But at least I have made a point that in the absence of a, an embargo on Chinese goods, I will still be able to sell my goods. That is strategic plan. Not a short-term goal of selling sanitizers today because my shop is not running and tomorrow shift back to the normal thing is not a strategy. So there has to be a long-term perspective of whatever you're looking at. Don't take major reactions. And that is where strategic uh, uh, resilience uh, has to come in. And this is truly good for the startup uh, students that technology evolution uh, should not stop during the pandemic. Nobody stops you. You can do it yourself. You can have a team on Zoom and you can keep doing it. Market differentiation is more pronounced during the uh, pandemic. So, for the example, I said TMT bars and uh, pipes. And uh, a product evolution can happen at this point of time. So, for example, uh, Mugun is one big uh, uh, manufacturer. So, they have uh, uh, the lace and all uh, the covers that you see uh, of lace chips and all. Uh, they are done by them. So that is foil poly, aluminum foil and uh, polyester uh, lamination. So what we did was it, the web width of the printer was, uh, I think, six feet. 
and the cutting after it is done we used to leave around uh, four inches uh, both sides two two inches on both sides and that was wastage so i said why can't we make stickers out of this and send it sell it uh, so uh, stickers of peace or whatever is running corona virus uh, stay safe stay uh, stay home stay safe stickers can be made and sold at one rupee instead of wastage if we can strategize how to reduce the waste because the financial implications now for industries uh, and the service sector are more pronounced because we are losing money we are bleeding we should think on how to cut costs and increase the profits so this is how we thought that we should uh, look at the new side till so last 10 years the, the mukund people were wasting that strips now we have started uh, creating stickers out of that so i think uh, i should end now uh please uh, look at i'm summing it up get everyone into the right mindset that you have to reduce costs increase sales or increase efficiency uh second is that you will have to innovate uh, to come up with a strategy uh, which is more resilient uh, which is more user friendly uh, and which is more effective in the terms of when you restart your operations Uh, then uh, increase your capital efficiency which is the most important thing that you can do the spread of capital has to be very judiciously done uh, then prepare your workforce for uh, a new uh, new tomorrow uh, so these are some things that young boys and girls will uh, start to uh, look at differently uh, and uh, imagine what the world will be tomorrow to come up with a better strategy thank you Uh, thank you very much sir for your uh, uh, you know the wonderful insights on uh, the you know the restructuring the organizations both at uh, management level or educational institutions and different organizations i think that's a aptly said uh, you know the intelligibility insights will always encourage for innovation uh, innovation at regular intervals holds key for sustainable you know to face the world in a in an apt manner thank you very much for, sir for your uh, the, the 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 pragmatic approach in building the organization now the it's my great pleasure to uh, the introduce another the resource person dr vishwanath kokanda sir he is one of the you know the key inspirational and uh, the very expertiseness he has in the digital marketing and entrepreneurship sir has uh, done uh, the incubator mentorship for queens mary university of london and uh, greenwich university he is also academic advisor at the walk baby business school in india sir did his uh, phd in uh, business management he is also a post graduate in psychology and uh, sir is the you know the uh, the, uh, the author of the the book master mastery at a driving desire's journey and uh, he also you know the honored the prestigious melvin jones fellowship by lions club international for exemplary social service to the community awarded india star award for people developing in digital marketing for facilitating more than 30000 free webinars during the, the pandemic sorry 30 30 plus and uh, sir has trained more than 10000 people over more six countries in areas of health health digital marketing and uh, it's a great honor uh, uh, for extending this uh, international webinar a warm welcome you sir on behalf of institution i extend a, a cordial welcome to this webinar now i hand over the session to you sir please yeah <clears throat> presiding uh, professional mr shivakumar management of this college mr kirtan uh, principal dr suresh and the professor uh, sarvamangala garu kaushik and then uh, you know girish and all the you know organizers a uh, team behind this event and all the uh, participants who are 
you know, part of this webinar. I extend a warm welcome from my side. Uh, it's uh, uh, I'm I'm in I'm in UK as of now. It's morning 6:15 a.m. And for this particular event, I had to kind of wake up at 4 a.m. while I had to prepare yesterday night and sleep late. So, <laughs> uh, but the thing is, you know, uh, <clears throat> for anything in India, you know, uh, I started my uh, career in academics and then I transitioned into corporates and then I moved on to become entrepreneur. So anything academic, you know, I, you know, get very enthusiastic and uh, because I resonate very much, very much with academics. And even after I moved to London, uh, I'm continuing my association with academics with uni universities such as Queen's Mary, University of London, you know, it's the result group, like, you know, it's Ivy League uh, uh, university sort. And then with Greenwich University. So, and, uh, and that anything in India, I'm much more enthusiastic. And uh, uh, this topic is also the topic which was suggested by, you know, your management team uh, about uh, building entrepreneurial ecosystem in higher education sector also uh, enthused me a lot for the fact that for the fact that you know uh, i resonate with academic world because i started my career in academics okay and then i'm continuing being in touch with academics since last 20 years so that resonates with me and then i became entrepreneur near 12 years back 12 years back so after 17 years of experience in global mncs and after working in 14 different countries i Became entrepreneur. Still, I had a steep ride, you know. I had a, I had, I have I had a tough roller coaster rides, and I understand the uh, the scope and depth and necessity of uh, having this entrepreneurial culture, entrepreneurial ecosystem, you know, within the academics. And uh, for these reasons, I I feel good and I feel enthusiastic and I I feel I have every right uh, to. You know, share my insights upon this session. Okay, I'll go ahead now. I'll I'll continue sharing my screen, and also I'll be putting off my screen on and off so that you know I'll have some you know uh, visibility of people in this particular uh, session. And uh, I would uh, ask one person: uh, Would uh, you people mind? I mean, the you and other participants, would you mind? You know, because we are few in number, we can add, we can add much more value. I mean, to this session, to people who are now and also who are expected to attend. You know, view this later. You know, in YouTube or wherever it is. My question is, you know, there is a lot of content in the internet, right? At a, at a touch of a button, right? You would get uh, papers in Harvard, you know, Massachusetts and Cambridge, and everything. Everything is a touch of a button. So. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of videos, a lot of animated videos, a lot of research content is already there, right? And whenever I'm doing any session or a webinar, I think a lot because I don't think I, I have a right to waste anybody's time. I have to share those things which people are not aware. Or if they're aware, I need to share fresh perspectives so that, you know, their perspectives get, get refreshed. You understand? So, uh, seeing when uh, I take permission, by the way, right, for me to go slow and hit few points, but go a bit deeper. Is it okay with all of us? Great, great. So I'm I'm just sharing this uh, screen now. Yeah, this is, you know, the slide I made for uh, your institution with all the respect for it. Okay, then uh, this is a brief, you know, uh, Mr. Suresh actually has introduced and I just wanted to also uh, just, you know, uh, mean, uh, show so that, you know, people will connect with who am I, what am I, what am I have been doing and what I intend to do. Okay, and then 
uh, these are a few glimpses of what I do with you know Greenwich University, right? And on the left hand side, you, you are able to see all the coaches, and on the right hand side, bottom, you are seeing all the coaches from uh, over 65 countries, and we work with them. Uh, this is uh, Queensbury University, you know, tint, right? With you know, I told you it's the Russell Group University. So, friends, uh, uh, just before kicking off. I just wanted to do the, this ice breaking part, right? To set the tone for the session. I know we, I know we all know, right? But just ruffling our feathers on these lines would help us get into the groove. So, you know, ideas are cheap. The best ones are worth about $20. Don't obvious over the idea. Now this resonates with this thought. Now an international webinar has been planned, right? By Soundarya Institute of Management and Science. And let's consider that's an idea, okay? Now, the pointer for whoever is thinking entrepreneurship and whoever is intending to inculcate an entrepreneurial ecosystem within an enterprise or a higher education institution or a university, right? The pointer is don't get obsessed with the idea. Okay, because many ideas have failed, many great ideas have failed. At the same time, many, many modest ideas which have been done well have you know, succeeded and they're doing well. And most entrepreneurial leaders were not the idea person on the team. They they are the ones who do something with ideas. So did you hope you have grasped the intent of the sentence? It is not about the ideation. It is about actually doing, right? And uh, subsequently, I'll tell you uh, my initial uh, entrepreneurial journey after a PhD in marketing was a blunder and was at a flop for the fact that I was a man of thoughts, but I was not a man of action. Okay. And now third line I'm reading to having an entrepreneurial mindset is a learned behavior and more you practice, the better you get it. So this is where, you know, most people I mean, actually get lost. We know 98% of entrepreneurs across the world fail. They fail. 98% plus is the, you know, failure rate. And you now before getting into entrepreneurship, the, the person thinks, Maybe by hearing some, you know, webinar or a session, like I can do anything. He jumps. I mean, people jump in, and then most people fail, and they 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 can't learn, and neither people around them can't make them understand, or these people can't think over the fact that yes, internal mindset is a learned behavior, right? If you practice more, if you indulge more, if you dwell more, if you continue doing, we get better. That somehow that aspect is missing, and. Uh, the fourth line is that the business model matters a lot. Now, there is a difference between model and idea, right? Idea is, okay, you know, uh, let me get into some, uh, let me develop some app is an idea. But model is bundling, bundling that idea in a way with which, you know, people will be able to buy. You know, for example, you know, if I, if I take a simpler example, somebody knows how to make idli or a dosa or a, you know, burger. but you know, for people to pay, you know, 100 rupees or you know, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, I need to do it in a particular way. I need to have a shop, I need to have a board, I need to have some attire, I need to have a system. You understand? So that is what is modeling about, right? It's not the idea, it's the model, right, which sells. And execution matters even more, right? And then money follows great execution. The last one is the glue within the ecosystem is more important than the, than the entities. It is, you know, the building blocks. The building blocks of an enterprise or it could be marketing, it could be finance, it could be customer service, it could be operations, right? It's not about the entities, but about how each of these entities are glued, how they are connected is what is being pointed to, okay? The reason why I uh, uh, presented this slide is to, you know, move you out of, the introduction and the informal you know talk which i which pointers which i was trying to share for you to get into the business mode to actually spark off your you know uh, neurons pertaining to your learnings to you know business and you know, management okay now <clears throat> one question it's a personal question and it's very relevant to this uh, session it's my personal opinion without stakeholder mindset in place enter entrepreneurship cannot be taught do you agree or disagree why? I want you people to uh, take uh, lead to chat in the chat box or 
uh, i would i won't mind if you can even speak you know but we, we could make it crisp yes uh, uh, sir in my sir. view yeah please yeah uh, primary stakeholders are students we need to create an ambience to to take them uh, their uh, interested level no one second mr shivakumar now here yes sir yes. now uh, i know uh, now the response I mean, whose responsibility it is to create the entrepreneurial ecosystem within an higher education institution teachers right so i mean because you said students i mean i had to bring uh, this uh, i mean uh, this point again okay now it is the responsibility of the management and the teachers and the end users or students and we have to bring them into our group and then we have to inculcate and nurture and enhance entrepreneurial spirit within them so it starts with the management and teachers so now the question is without the stakeholder mind mindset can teachers inculcate that entrepreneurial ecosystem can they nurture can they handle can they dwell can they stretch is the question certainly not sir yeah so i mean uh, i know you know entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset is a, is a learned behavior i know that i know that very much and but you know i beg to differ with people who think that you know uh, a teacher with all the respect i have for teachers right i am also teaching now i am also a respected teacher i beg to differ that you know teacher without stakeholder mindset cannot cannot actually complement you know the entrepreneurial ecosystem you know growth or establishment in a higher education institution and here i would take like take an example in this western world in this in this western world uh, most universities not all universities right the professors actually do consulting they do consulting especially people who teach to engineering and management students right what happens because you have to consult a company it could be global mnc it could be a sme it could be a startup right now you know if a professor has to has to consult right he needs to you know do what all is done in mckinsey or a you know or a deloitte or a pwc right you understand so that's how uh, you know the, the professor develops the stakeholder mindset now the impact the impact of not having a class the impact of a holiday the impact of you know two or three percent more students fail, failing in in the examination right or the impact of few students not getting placement versus versus the pain right to improve 10% of the profits of a business organization right or the pain of laying off 20 to 30% people is is different actually right while each of the pain is respected while each of the work is appreciated right so this is the point now when a teacher when a professor starts you know taking taking a consultant's role right he would understand you now I mean i know as a teacher myself with a phd holding a phd myself i know the depth of a teacher in academics you know in the pedagogy will be very very deep that is a fact right because he teaches i mean all the students end to end and they'll have thorough you know depth of the pedagogy i mean the discipline of the subject which you know a consultant might not have but surgically right using all the all the information knowledge and skills and, and put focusing on it on the problems of the entrepreneurs right so the teacher would actually kind of the enhance or improve that kind of ability and the improved ability will start reflecting in the in the classroom for example every student does mini projects every student does major projects right and then you know uh, now i know there is a lot of work you know to review the proposal initially on on which area the student is doing a mini or major project and then finally approving the project and then guiding the student through the project and finally you know signing off 
approving the you know the submission and then uh, initiating you for via was all this is i know that the, the tradition is involved in it but there is a lot of learning for the student in it so when it a train and you know a teacher develops you know uh, that that kind of stakeholder mindset where he becomes responsible for profit and loss very actually complements the company to grow by 10% or 5% or where the teacher is also able to solve problems of organization small petty organizations around him right his teaching will get edged with you know the entrepreneurial mindset and he will be much more empowered to you know kind of handle uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem establishment and nurturing that's my point okay and this is what i this is actually the peak of my session right without this without this my dear friends i strongly feel any amount of knowledge will not help right because uh, i say this because uh, for 18 years i worked in global mncs i traveled 13 14 countries i did, had a, had a phd in marketing and then i thought when i was resigning a plum job in a global corporate i thought i'll be having a company like this very soon with that you know feeling i resigned and i should say after 6 7 months i had i felt so bad right and uh, my anxiety and my pain was so inexpressible that i had to you know prepare a cv again and go back to the job again right my pointer here my dear friends is <clears throat> you know actual actual business right doing actual business right having a setup investing raising a company having a business bank account having few employees going talking to clients and solving the problems is actual real real game right and i failed initially but with the help of few coaches i took time i i covered myself and then i took now i have three companies in three countries i have 60 70 people working still i am a small company but in I mean, that's what is happening now so even i suggest you know most of the teachers i have many teacher friends in india in uk in us in mexico in africa in the middle east right somehow there is a lot of resistance uh, in our part of the world for them to take the consulting engagements why not why not my dear friends why not you should take consulting engagements where you would get edged with the you know the corporate way right not only you'll get edged with corporate way but with the ability your teaching quotient will increase and also you will make additional revenues right because if you work in the evenings if you work in the uh, weekends during the weekends and you'll have a lot of holidays teachers have a lot of holidays during summer and during you know spring and you know winter seasons right all the time can be utilized you know to make difference to organizations and to make more revenues right and this is a point which i am trying to propagate uh, since some time some of it's going well but uh, i i mean i'll continue doing this okay now uh, i am moving on to the next slide okay now you know i i told i'll i'll go slow i'll take few topics right but i said we'll go deep we all know ecosystem now we were talking about entrepreneurial ecosystem and we were talking about you know uh, kind of nurturing and uh, kind of uh, promoting ecosystem entrepreneurial ecosystem but you know many times i asked many people and they have some uh, clarity you know problem with this word system and ecosystem right and i'll just read it for you for those people who are not you know familiar with it system is a group of interacting and interrelated interdependent components that form a complex and unified whole an ecosystem is is a community of organisms interacting with each other and with their environments between biotic and abiotic components i know with the speed of my read you did not understand but i will tell you with a small example okay now if you take our body right i have eyes i have ears i have so many body parts right now we can call this as a system okay my body as a system now if you take i as a unit right i as a unit i has some further parts and then you know all the parts should be good for for my eye to work and i is connected with so many kinds of nerves and brain 
so so each body part can be considered as a system now each of this body part interconnected is living in a body ecosystem you understand so my body could be considered a system right or my body could be considered as an ecosystem comprising of several systems you understand where each of the system will be in synchrony with other systems in a needed way okay now uh, now if you extrapolate this if you extrapolate this right you know the so soundary institute of management science is a system okay system comprising of you know staff and then building and then infrastructure and then permissions and then brand name right lot of things all of these comprise you know this soundary institute of management and science as system now there are many such systems in bangalore and karnataka and india right in this education space so now all those universities awarding bodies right and then you know relevant agencies all they all of them become part of educational ecosystem okay libraries and then all the book publishers all those things become edu ecosystem now when you are talking about educational uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem entrepreneurial ecosystem <clears throat> now now i don't want to get into uh, um, the point of why you have to become entrepreneurs and why college should do that's all i i'll take all of the understood right now <clears throat> you know the countries you know each of the country uh uh if it has to kind of uh, serve its population the growing population it has to empower right more people to become entrepreneurs right capable to and also capable people to become entrepreneurs to meet the needs of the country and, and also the globe okay and the onus has moved from government to universities now higher education institutions now especially in this part of the world where i am now the focus is all time high my dear friends all time high right if i go to any any university you know in scotland in wales in england i mean the kind of uh, focus you uh, know on the entrepreneurship is unimaginable when i compare you know with other parts of the world which where i have been to i said i worked in four different countries right I, in some parts of africa some parts of apac and some parts of india right there i should be very frank telling you no know, the intent is there intent is there right you know i mean lot of uh, i see lot of uh, what do you call publications from india i see lot of publications india is india produces lot of publications compared to uk right academicians write papers corporate entities write papers student write papers but there is no equivalent work output right uh, which people are trying to put in and write papers and gain credentials there is a gap between what people are thinking and what people are writing and what people actually are actually doing that gap is there but in this part of the world i see that <clears throat> number of <clears throat> number of uh, you know publications are less but the activity is high the action is high i'm 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 very much impressed and in the edu, in the edu ecosystem <clears throat> in the higher edu, in the higher edu ecosystem in india there are few exclusive you know uh, systems in place who are doing very well i don't want to name them right we all know who are doing well right and then at a touch of a button in the google you will know you'll get the list and they're doing awesome so now right the academicians who are who are in this particular session right and who are who are expected to you know view this particular video I mean this this pointers are for them okay so <clears throat> i was referring to this uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem just now okay now uh, why why the focus should be there is a question is a brief uh, through right i uh, let's not read the whole uh, you know page but you know <clears throat> i'll read the first first part of it entrepreneurial activity is critical to economic progress right the eventual attempt or even success of entrepreneurial activities can serve as a measure of university's impact on entrepreneurial education and ultimately in the economic growth and regional development this is the whole point right economic growth and regional development is the whole point which universities have to complement and now the way university universities are looked at or higher education institutes are looked at or education for innovation and entrepreneurship 
that's all that's the focus now it's no it's no more getting a job or no more getting a placement or no more getting literacy no more it's all about education for innovation and entrepreneurship okay and then <clears throat> uh universities are attributed an important role in development of region innovation by educating and preparing students for diverse roles in future academic and professional development and leadership this is the enhanced focus and expectations from universities my dear friends now based on present demand right is entrepreneurial university right worth the age is a question okay now uh, what what i'm trying to say each each higher education institution which is in and around you know uh, which are part of the world is it's fine but you know because the focus is on innovation and entrepreneurship rather than you know employment or literacy right could we start seeing could we start you know looking and thinking and feeling and talking you know in the lines of yes i i work in an entrepreneurial higher education institution i work in entrepreneurial college does it make sense my friend does it make sense now yes you know saundarya institute of institute of management and science is a you know post graduate prestigious post graduate college yes no doubt about it but you know for your mind for yourself you know because we are thinking that you know we need to inculcate this entrepreneurial you know ecosystem right looking every higher education high, higher education institution with the title called entrepreneurial college entrepreneurial university does it make sense my dear friends does it make sense because i am asking this question because unless you feel unless you feel you know there is something you know uh, in india we call manasa vasha karmana if you can't think <clears throat> you can't talk if you can't talk you can't do that's it right if you, if you can't see our college or our university or our institute as you know as an entrepreneurial you know burn a pot or a you know uh, uh, we cannot actually uh, talk and do and work in those lines okay so i know uh, it takes time for people to contemplate and dwell and accept this line of thought but i mean i experimented this thought and then <clears throat> when when i look at an institution right i i only start looking at it as an entrepreneurial college then i look at every system you know the person uh, a student who is sitting in the institution right as a person as a part of the ecosystem who should do well right in the entrepreneurial space and then you know i mean the kind of intensity with which we share pointers the kind of focus we have the kind of enthusiasm will will be actually you know involved with right i have seen some different that's why i was sharing this point now see these are some some facts my dear friends you know about universities and higher education institutions these are some researched outcomes uh, based on you know some researcher based in uh, europe right i did not uh, put his name so as per you know paul is one of the person who has driven this research but there is a team behind it i did not put their names so knowledge is no longer the domain of universities it means the knowledge got transferred to corporates now right knowledge got transferred to consultants now everybody is knowledgeable knowledge is not just in university library but knowledge is in phones right knowledge is you know at the touch of a button for every person is seeking knowledge that's the shift which has taken place and then universities funded by public purse are under immense pressure and scrutiny to add more value to the economy and society and become less dependent on the state this is being pointed that you know get grants get projects right get funding externally don't depend on the government right if the, if the if the university or college is doing exemplary work right private companies will start funding for their surveys for their projects for their you know findings and then you know most of the universities thrive here in this part of the world with funding from private firms and private institutions the third one is competition from the private sector is being encouraged and is growing right now you know the kind of degrees which which have value the degrees the degree mba mbba certificate value right now nowadays it is getting subdued right even people with certification from any training company are being picked because now global certifications have come into picture global bodies of certifications have come for example i am agile coach i am i don't have agile certificate from any university 
but I have my certification from Agile body and people in this part of the world don't look at my MBA, but they look at my Agile certification, which is from the global body. Because I'm Agile certified, I'm respected, I'm, 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 I, I get opportunities. They don't even ask whether I've done my PhD or MBA, right? So what I'm trying to say, the focus on degrees is waning, right? The focus on skilling is, you know, is coming up now. So, you know, global MNCs, they are not really bothered about the regular ritualistic pedagogy now, right? If somebody with 18 years, 10 plus two education is having good skills to, to do some web development or to do some analytics or do, do some Python programming, then giving him contract jobs. You understand? So uh, <clears throat> that's what I was trying to share with this uh, point here. Uh, competition from private sector is being encouraged and is growing. Employers, parents, graduates are seeking demanding ways to improve future life careers, you know, especially in tough times. Okay. And then uh, it is long understood that environments which are highly complex, unpredictable, and uncertain demand an entrepreneurial response to survive and succeed. I mean, this is a challenge in India. I'll, I'll come to that point. Now, when there is a challenge, right? When there is a challenge, it is expected by the government that entrepreneurs should come out with a solution. For example, you know, in transportation, transportation was a big issue, right? It's only public transport and own cars in US. Somebody has come up with Uber and Uber has, is a transport solution, commute solution, and it has spread, spread across the world, it's doing very well. And then Ola has come up, Ola is entering London now, you know. It already entered and it is expected to, you know, spread all over Europe now. So, you know, Entrepreneurs are expected to give solutions to the, you know, for the well-being of the population of the country or for the world. Okay, so yeah, friends, uh, and uh, finally, uh, recognition that universities need to be more flexible and more porous and more adaptable, strong leadership and an environment that encourage the development of internal behavior. Okay, now just tell, just think for a while. To for universities to get recognition, right? For for universities to get recognition, tell me, tell me, uh, whenever you get time, you check for you know Ivy League universities or Russell Group universities. With all the respect for universities which have groomed me because of which I'm doing well, I'm happy, I'm fine, I'm so gratitudinal to all my country and the water and the food I ate. But my question is, you know, we're talking about employability percentage in india is how much sir shivakumar sir how much is employability percentage of graduates and postgraduates in india see are you asking employability skill or employability sir? percentage employability percentage i think uh, not more than 20 percent if my memory is correct yeah i mean since decade i, I think it's around four percent actually if i'm yes. not wrong okay but no no, no, yeah, it could vary from city to city, place to place, college to college, right? If you take you type, you know, why there is low employability percentage in Google, you will find thousands of PPTs and articles, published articles, but actual problem is not getting addressed. Actual problem is not getting addressed, right? Now, in, in these lines, we're talking about you know, employability, I mean, entrepreneurship ecosystem building, right? Now, you know, idea, idea is it's good, but dwelling on the thought and, you know, making it manifest is a challenge. And that's what is, that's what I'm referring to in the last point in the previous slide. So the, the institution will demand respect, will command respect when it, when it can actually help, you know, each student in the university or in the institution, right? as a value creator to whatever he does. He could be an employee, he should be a real stakeholder and he should be, you know, a, you know, you know what you call a terminator. I mean, positive terminator, not destroyer. If he, if he becomes a, you know, startup owner, right, he should be able to really at least give employment to a couple of people rather than he becoming, you know, seeking employment. So then the university will get respect. The institution will start commanding respect. That's what I'm referring to. Now, uh,
See, now when we say entrepreneurial university, it's with systems, processes, policies, practices, culture, and leadership. And with the staff, with their entrepreneurial spirit, rewards, incentives, support, development, role model. For students, with opportunities, engagement, networks, contact, learning by experience and failing. And for the impact, effects on institution and its people and graduates and stakeholders and wider government ecosystem. My dear friends, this is the crux of this uh, uh, session. This slide is the most important slide of the session. This slide, right? You could, you know, take a screenshot or, you know, take a picture of it. And, you know, if any institution is aspiring to uh, become, to, you know, kind of nurture entrepreneurial ecosystem, right? This is what they should have, you know. The idea, the idea of making that institution, you know, entrepreneurial ecosystem ready can only happen when all the, all the things which you're seeing here, one, two, three, four, 16 things, if they come into place, then, you know, your idea will manifest. Okay. Now, we'll quickly see, we'll quickly see this example. Example of what I'm talking. You're, you're able to see this, right, my dear friends? Yeah, perfect. So, see, this is University of Cambridge, okay? And it's it's a business school site, which I'm seeing. I'm directly going, you know, what all, what all I was trying to talk? I wanted to show you, you know, a standard reference, rather than leaving it for your imagination, rather than leaving it for you to figure out, right? And, you know, uh, this is a great example of, you know, what all I have seen. And because I visited this place actually a couple of times to attend some free sessions before the COVID time. And, you know, my learnings have been really, 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 really worthwhile and really great. And if I'm just going into the inter entrepreneurship tab. Okay. And in this tab, <clears throat> see, all these are for the students of Cambridge University, right? And they, this is referring to the ecosystem, right? Now, what happens, you know, when when we are talking about ecosystem, <clears throat> you know, what we do, we include one chapter for our students, or we include a couple of chapters for the students, or we in, we give one subject for our students or entrep entrepreneurship. That's all. Somebody who didn't do entrepreneurship in any time of his life, he'll come and teach the subject to the students. Right? And then, I mean, yes, you know, you know, we can teach. No, I don't question that. But it cannot be taught in the in the way it has to be taught, it has to be made understood. Second thing, you know, students, they skip some classes, holidays, all that, and they go for exams, you know, they, they prepare for exams and they pass, right? But when I'm talking to ecosystem, this is what you will see now, you know, in the ecosystem in, in this Cambridge University site here. Now, they see Accelerate Cambridge. See this uh, content. I'll just quickly share through. <coughs> now, here seeing enabling meaningful venture creation out of Cambridge. Accelerate Cambridge startup accelerator established the Cambridge Judge School in May 1212. The school is situated in the center of Cambridge, blah, blah. Uh, okay, so this is about investing in, this is about enabling meaningful venture creation out of Cambridge. Okay, now if you go to the next one, Enterprise Tuesday. Mm. So they do every Tuesday some sessions as to what is the entrepreneurship? Is it is it for me? Okay. Now if you go further down, venture creation weekends. All these are pertaining to entrepreneurship, but they are creating different different things actually. You know, to
to keep the students continuously engaged because we don't know with with what they get they resonate with enterprise tech ignite innovation and entrepreneurship strategic business growth program if you see there are actually eight nine such things yeah, there are competition also medical technology venture competition okay network events and competition now in this entrepreneurship talk you are seeing so many things now with this 12 or 15 things which you are seeing now they created the you know entrepreneurial ecosystem <clears throat> now somebody teaches in the class right and a student when he walks in this a uh, tuesday he'll come across that event okay tuesday and uh, our session and then weekend he'll come across some other event where people are partner to do something so he'll be on the journey continuously for two years and then he will see seniors participating in the pitching events in the first year itself and the seniors getting 100000 pounds or 55000 pounds or 50000 pounds funding and then his name coming up in the alumni newsletter and that actually you know encourages people innately for people who who think that they want to become entrepreneurs naturally now you know while the thought is great while the thought is great and if there is no ecosystem except one chapter or few chapters or one paper in the you know which mba students will have right you know there's not justice to the thought which we have that's not giving justice it's it's actually you know uh, i should say uh, it's it's total you know uh, injustification to our conscience if 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 you're talking make in india right if you're talking you know entrepreneurship right we have to really go all out like a tsunami and windfall and then live the spirit of that and then then only we will be able to inspire okay so this is what i wanted to say my dear friends the rest of the slides are all about you know what are all the building blocks of ecosystem uh, and what is the step by step process right to inculcate the ecosystem right you will get thousands of uh, you know reports and you know papers in the google i don't want to waste your time but repeating those things i wanted to actually create that thought and the necessity and the way it has to be done you know for you and i wanted to show you this you know i mean i have been attempt attempting this actually i'm just skipping to the slides now because we are almost seven now <clears throat> i can anyway share these uh, slides with uh, the participants you could share with whoever is interested you are seeing this you know on october 11th i did i i, I wanted to do a session can management teach it down the role of management consultant <clears throat> right in 90 days start creating value and make revenues this was this, this was the uh, idea i had and i campaigned this i actually uh, reached out to 700 management teachers in india right interestingly two people emailed me two people emailed me actually you understand so uh, the reason for that is the reason for that is you know if you go up this uh, up this uh, uh, you know slide this is talking about global entrepreneurship index index see all the greens are the locations where you know the, the appetite is high for entrepreneurship and in india it's fourth india is fourth after china that's why people are not inclined towards entrepreneurship how inclined people are in this greener part we are you know we are four times or five times less inquisitive about entrepreneurship than that so it's not dwelling okay incidentally i am in the part of, part of the world now in england and it is green and you know uk is uh, i think it's second or third most user uh, entrepreneur friendly country ease of doing business is probably i think second or third best in the world that's why that that is what is called you know entrepreneurial ecosystem okay and then friends uh, yeah now you know because yes it's almost uh, uh, 12 now i would appreciate any questions and then you know we could close you know the rest of the things please you know uh, research and you will find a lot of step by step process but the thought and the intent you know is more important that's why i covered that as those aspects so any questions i'll be glad to attempt probably if not able to answer
uh, yes sir you know the the session is also live in youtube uh, we are getting few questions on the session yeah uh, i would like to bring to your notice sir uh, one of the uh, professors uh, by name uh, lokesh had asked see how if you were in the uh, the, the the principal of the organizations yeah see how what would be your mantra to explore uh, the entrepreneurial skills among uh, undergraduate uh, students uh, in indian context okay and mr lokesh is from which place which uh, city in is bangalore is bangalore sir bangalore yeah i mean mr lokesh i appreciate your question so uh, i i have showed one slide just now okay and i also went ahead uh, proposing this to a uh, few universities in india and they still thinking somehow there is no action and the the uh, i mean the 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 question has you know uh, the question you have and uh, the answer is what i shared with those universities now that is <clears throat> now as a professor right as a assistant professor as a assistant professor as a senior lecturer and as a lecturer right i was talking about you know you people getting the entrepreneurial edge when you get that edge you will you will start you know hitting the minds of students properly and naturally you will be able to encourage them right so the easiest way is you could be in rural area you could be in semi rural area you could be in urban area you could be in metropolitan city wherever you are right you could pick 5 km radius from the from the institution place and identify all the startups and smes right go and talk to them ask how what what help do, do they need right and you and your team students together with faculty members right give solutions to them resolve their problem and when they get impressed they'll start running behind you it's not impossible it's not impossible my dear uh, sir it's possible right for my startup i did the same way right as a startup nobody was coming to me i have written emails to 1000 companies and then 30 40 p- people respond because i wanted to give them free service and then i could add value to them i could justify them and then i i got testimonials and my ball rolled my ball rolled nobody will come to you so you know in a geographical location where you are right pick up and then reach out to them and then resolve their issues and then they'll become user, user case study publish them right not you now i see a lot of publications where there is a lot of assumptions a, a lot of assumptions and theoretical content publish this practical help resolve problems of pawn shop owners help resolve problems of vegetable sellers on the street resolve problems of fruit sellers on the street right on road side tea shop owners right come up with viable solution is not impossible right that would set the ball rolling there is one professor in mumbai he takes all his students every week to vegetable bazaar and one of the assignment he gives to them in mumbai is they have to sell vegetables by shouting like you know all other vegetable sellers you understand i mean i just told yeah i think i'm done with the question more questions please sir uh, second question uh, uh, one of the stu- students asked see being as an nri see how do you connect uh, the the education system in india i didn't uh, i probably need some elaboration you know in the in the overview we can share the, the points so what else in indian system comparatively uh, 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 the european what is good about indian education system is the question yeah, no no what are the challenges that normally the the indians okay. will come across i get you okay yes now in india right we i mean the fancy is you know i have dual specialization right i know marketing i know finance or i know marketing and hr people want to talk that i have more specialization i mean here in in western world if you say just marketing will be kicked out because they want to know specifically if you are branding specialist or lead generation specialist or marketing automation specialist right you understand so there we we, we read many subjects right but very few go deep here right they read, they read little and they are masters so now a lot of uh, indians come to me for interviews but they apply jobs you know in my company right 
and then for the love of talking to indians i talk to them but i don't pick them up the reason is you know without the respect for them the reason is you know they want to tell lot of things look sir uh, i got 80% in my btech and i got uh, 75% in my mba and i played cricket i got prize in fs okay and then you know that's what i mean i i often see right in no cv i see you know look you know i have researched your firm and then these are the problems i could solve for your firm give me an opportunity no i don't see that and that's why you know till the school level our system is very very good but i personally feel you know uh, we are reading uh, too much there's too much syllabus unfortunately we have most people are unable to focus properly and gain expertise okay sir the another question by a student being a nri how are you looking towards india in terms of entrepreneurial prospect every now and then every you know uh, in, in the, the britishers right native britishers they want to come to india with me they want to, to make make me their partner and with the help of me they want to do business in india and india is being looked as very bright spot very bright spot and you know now even though there is covid and brexit deal uh, uk prime minister boris is coming to india on the 26 january he is a chief guest he is traveling during the pandemic time only because of the you know very big chunk of business deal so uk india is my dear friends hot spot now the population which india has right i often visit india when i land in india i mean i'm just telling jovially right informally when i go to any center in bangalore hyderabad i see money flowing on the road money each person right is an entity right who spends a lot of money for morning tea idli petrol phone dresses evening chai samosa and then lot of things right here at 4:30 you can't see anybody that people because of the winter darkness they go and sleep so you don't see find people so i mean now because of the population you know the business scope is seen very you know impressively by this part of the world that's why us operates in india you know apart, apart from us most of its headquarters are in india because of the population right india will be hot spot for business yes for next two decades sir uh, you said uh, the employment uh, percentage is uh, 4% and it vary if you were a policy maker in india uh, say what would be your strategy to enhance the employment uh, opportunities or percentage in india mr shivakumar this is a very good question now <clears throat> uh, if policy if policies were right if if policies are good right whole world would have been good because the, this world is being operated by some religious uh, policies right every religion is good right so whole world should have been heaven now right so the success not, won't depend on the policy but on you and me it will depend on you and me you ask you ask teachers in india right how many people, how many of them became teachers by chance or by choice you ask right a, 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 you know a unhappy teacher you know can't teach can't live the teaching role and we all know what is the quality of the content which is coming into publication and what percentage of them are original and they can only produce 4% uh, you know employability right here is not policy because i worked in japan i worked in japan incidentally with a big company i have seen the quality of work from employees even from lower level is very high compared to what i have seen in india especially teachers right so uh, i mean my answer for your question is it's not policies it's your involvement my involvement our involvement which makes difference and and without thinking about people around us if we if we get stuck to the job other people will follow the bandwagon it all starts with one of you people right 
the again uh, the another question sir uh, what what would be your mantra for preparing teachers 21st century see <clears throat> now uh, now you know here for this question for this question uh you know the you know the 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 thought clarity which people should have when they finish the graduation post graduation before getting jobs right is is what i think we should work on right now now if the salaries if the salaries in all sectors are more or less same people would as a teaching also most brilliant people would also consider teaching also as a competitive profession right now you know teaching as very competent people no doubt but the percentage is few less right majority of the so called you know percentage people on papers they you know they get into different corporate things right so now if if you see you know all the premium institutes in india premium institutes right they get paid well and that's why they produce well for example right you know i don't want to name them i don't want to take anybody in any names all the premium institutes they get paid very well and they they produce is good so uh, the mantra is you know now you know if 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 we have to really make difference to the country right by teaching we should get into those institutes where we can really make difference is way one way two now nobody is giving you opportunity for example nobody opportunity you know byju's byju's byju company is owner byju company owner right he started his company probably when he was 28 29 and he is sponsoring indian company now indian cricket now isn't it so if you have the fire right if you have the capability to teach you you teach well people will come to you uh, mean flocking to you i am telling this because in small capacity i am teaching in six countries now in in pandemic time in last nine months i interacted with more than 4000 people in six countries out of which around 600 and uh, 35 people were paid respondents right so my earning didn't stop my interaction didn't stop it's all because of the passion because my business has slightly slowed down and i started spending my time and because of those uh, posts only i think somebody might have seen and they referred me to soundarya institute for this uh, call if not i wouldn't have been there understand so yeah, it works like that okay th- th- thank you very much sir for your enlightening uh, uh, to us through your knowledge and uh, you know the uh, the, uh, the 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 profundity uh, in the entrepreneurial and digital area now i request uh, professor uh, sarumangala madam dean chairman department of commerce post studies bangalore university to share her uh, impressions on the uh, webinar madam thank you thank you good afternoon everyone who participated in this seminar i am very privileged to be here and uh, by hearing all these uh, resource persons i thought that it this the uh, covid is not a pandemic but actually even though it is pandemic it has given an opportunity for many of the organization as well as for the uh, uh, teachers like us for organization they can have enough time to spare for uh, conducting this type of webinars many teachers uh, many organization even though they are very small or big they are very active in organizing this type of seminar and also it is privilege for us uh, like us uh, many of us to hear the, uh, the uh, hear the spiritual uh, very good innovative thoughts of the resource persons uh, the nowadays uh, due to co- uh, covid it has given an opportunity for uh, more online t- trading virtual classrooms online transaction and many, many lot uh, even uh, 
sustainability during this innovative also we should think of sustainability sustainability of not only as per the uh, jawhar sir told for sustainability strategy should be very good strategy should be made even though not only for entrepreneurs even for the teachers and the educational institutions like us also should have think of very good strategies for the survival nowadays i come across many colleges even the commerce is uh, doing well 75% of the colleges uh, universities are having commerce strength then also some of the colleges are suffering a lot in getting their admissions during this covid so one of the other strategies for our survival some strategies even though ours is a service organizations we should also think of some strategies for our survival all the org- i'm uh, yeah, even uh, during my lic visit to different organizations i used to give them tips i used to interact with them and i used to tell them why can't they do some other strategies for the survival they used to say that uh, the admissions were very low because of covid but covid is there then also students like to learn only mm-hmm. so stu- colleges should think of some strategies even the faculties and the academicians for the because if the institution is there then only the way teachers will be there in the institution that's why it is the joint effort of both institution as well as the faculty of the organization to put their strategies for the survival and also as per vishwanath sir he has rightly identified the st- teaching the passion he is uh, i am really impressed by his words that he is teaching for more than six uh, uh, countries and he is interacting with many people during covid also is very much active it definitely it is true it is uh, uh, because of uh, knowledge sharing and heartfully we should share the things uh, then only we uh, it is very dear easy to reach the people so you know very well teachers uh, uh, all the teachers uh, well, it is not a easy thing to teach we should be dynamic enough we should uh, enhance our knowledge depth in the subject and also like this uh, knowledge sharing the organizer knowledge, knowledge sharing platforms we should participate in this knowledge sharing uh, platforms and not only we should share our thinking but we should also lead, listen to others wh- how they are doing so that we can enhance our knowledge teachers should not be uh, just a teachers they should be a researchers because nowadays we got uh, different uh, sorts of people students in a fingertip itself they will get so many things even in youtube also they can learn but with a, a teacher virtual teacher is different from actual teacher teacher in person is uh, cannot be replaced by virtual teaching because by one to one touch we can understand the uh, uh, student uh, properly and we can nurture uh, his uh, abilities because no everybody got one or the other skill it is the duty of the teacher to read the student and co- provide the information according to his uh, level of perception so that uh, a- any uh, all teachers teachers role is very much important virtual teacher can't do that P- practically only if offline teaching offline cannot replace virtual teaching because we can listen to virtually we can listen to vishwanath sir but if we interact with virt- uh, vishwanath sir is different Uh, if we in your vishnath sir cannot be replaced by virtual teaching so uh, because whatever i need i can ask directly the questions i can clarify myself and also he can according to my perception according to my ideas he can also give things so uh, 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 yeah, even the covid has given an upper enough opportunity for uh, online online uh, tra- online uh, tra- platforms then also uh, to listen but then also virtual teaching can't replace the actual teaching skill so all the teachers should be not only the re- teachers they should also be a researchers no, because by re- researching they can easily convey the message according to the depth of the knowledge of the student so being a educator is not just about sharing knowledge it is about making sure that lear- learners truly integrate this knowledge and derive learning out of it any teacher that does not result in effective learning is useless therefore to be an effective teacher one needs to be deliver the domain knowledge using most suitable pedagogical uh, tools so an effective teacher is also required to be a researcher according to my knowledge uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity
because as it is only 5 minutes is given for me i don't want to take much time thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much madam uh, within a short span uh, uh, you know the, you have enlightened us through your uh, you know the research pent of mind now i request uh, to our beloved principal sir dr suresh c hegedi for his uh, presidential remark yes good afternoon everyone i am dr suresh hegedi principal of soundarya institute of management and science distinguished keynote addressee of the today's webinar dr jawar suri sethi sir academic advisor government of india distinguished resource person of the today's webinar dr vishwanath kokonda digi premier author and award winning coach from london respected dr sarvamangala madam dean and chairman department of commerce bangalore university our beloved mr kirtan kumar m sir ceo soundarya educational trust bangalore distinguished delegates members of the organizing committee and my dear colleagues today we are all connected for one day international level webinar on redefining the strategic planning for sustainable growth during the economic crisis created by pandemic 19 being organized by the department of management of soundarya institute of management and science in association with internal quality assurance cell of sims the very purpose of the today's webinar was to explore a new mantra of strategic management and planning for sustainable growth during economic crisis created by pandemic 19 through its first and second wave through eminent personalities in the field of education and industry ladies and gentlemen in this regard when the members of the organizing committee contacted and requested dr jawar suri sethi sir and dr vishwanath kokonda sir to be the resource persons of the one day international level webinar on redefining strategic planning for sustainable growth during economic crisis created by the pandemic 19 both the distinguished and eminent personalities accepted our invitation in spite of their busy schedule this shows their concern towards the teaching fraternity and commitment in constructing a better society to live in sir we are all blessed through your gracious presence and express a deep sense of gratitude for sparing and sharing your valuable time and rich experience and knowledge amongst us mr kirtan kumar yam ceo sir in his uh, uh, inaugural address mentioned the various problems that have been created by the pandemic 19 in the present and he also mentioned clearly knowledge alone can rescue from the present situation created by pandemic 19 then dr jawar suri sethi sir academic advisor government of india in his co keynote address uh, stressed on innovation redesigning and defining the strategic planning in the manufacturing and the service industry he mentioned it is the right time for us to set the right mindset try our level best to reduce the cost increase the efficiency of the work force increase the volume of sales and make a better and optimum utilization of the capital and it is a time for us to prepare the workforce of the organization for better tomorrow similarly dr vishwanath kokonda digi premier and author and award winning coach in his technical session mentioned mentioned about how to build entrepreneurial ecosystem in higher education sector especially in india he also mentioned ideas are cheap don't obsess over the ideas do something with the ideas practice more having an entrepreneurial mindset business models matters more 
the glue within the ecosystem is more important than the entities and he also highlighted the significance of a stakeholder's mind in running the organization smoothly and effectively later sir explained what is system what is ecosystem and how it helps in running the organization smoothly and effectively and later he explained about what is entrepreneurial ecosystem and how it helps in sustaining growth especially during an economic crisis created by pandemic and 19 sir also mentioned that if policies are good and if they are implemented effectively then everything will be good for the nation or for the country and he also mentioned one specific mantra for preparing teachers for 21st century and that is pay them well pay them handsome salary protect them and automatically it is possible for you to exploit maximum support involvement and cooperation from the teaching fraternity working in the organization then later dr sarvamangala madam dean chairman department of bangalore university in her uh, impression about the webinar she mentioned it was very good thought provoking and enlightening one also but during her impression she mentioned it very clearly though covid 19 has created a lot of problems a lot of impact not only on manufacturing industry even on servicing industries especially the educational sector also but at the same time she mentioned that this pandemic 19 has given a lot of opportunities so it means that rather than concentrating on the problems we have to concentrate on what are the opportunities that are available to the organization during this pandemic crisis created by pandemic 19 and we have to make better use of those opportunities and as a result of that it is possible for us to run the organization smoothly and effectively she mentioned it is the responsibility of the management especially during the crisis created by pandemic 19 to look after the teachers and equally the teachers okay it is the responsibility of the teachers to take care of the students community also so both together that is management as well as the teaching faculty can do something good for the students community in constructing a better career for them ladies and gentlemen were all the deliberations and the discussions of the webinar were enlightening and a thought provoking one i'm very happy to know that more than 500 delegates connected across india and even from abroad and express my deep sense of gratitude to everyone for making today's webinar a grand success in the true sense with these few words i conclude my presidential remarks and over to shiv kumar sir for further proceedings thank you very much thank you very much sir for uh, you know the, the putting your the insights uh, in addition to the what uh, the esteemed delegates i mean resource person at trade now i request uh, the professor giris sir head of the department department of business administration to propose vote of thanks thank you gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions the more you express gratitude for what you have the more likely you will have even more express gratitude for it. good afternoon everyone i girish head of the department department of business administration saundarya institute of management and science and i am here to propose vote of thanks for today's international webinar on redefining strategic planning for sustainable growth during pandemic sustainability is meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their needs it's a high time to rethink redefine the sustainability of the economy for this the end the expertness of the magnanimous speakers like dr jawahar suri shetty and Krishna Kokanda helps to redefine the strategies to meet out the needs for the future generation. I would like to thank our keynote speaker, Dr. Jawahar Suri Shetty, advisor to Government of India, for enlightening us with his knowledge 
and inspirational word. It gave deep insights to the topic and revealed some interesting facts. I am pretty sure that the precious knowledge that Dr. Jawahar Suri Shetty gave us will definitely help us in sharpen our thinking ability. A heartful thank to you, sir, on behalf of me and on behalf of the institution. I would like to thank today's technical session resource person, Dr. Vishwanath Kokanda, who joined us from London, United Kingdom. He has given a new dimension for all higher education institutions for creating an ambience and an ecosystem for developing an entrepreneurial temperament among the young generation to make them a successful contributor to the economy of this great country. Thank you, sir. I would also like to thank Dr. Suresh C. Hegadi, Principal, Saundarya Institute of Management Science, who is our source of inspiration. Without his guidance, support, and encouragement, the organizing of this international webinar wouldn't have been possible. Thank you, sir. I thank Dr. Sarvamangala, Dean and Chairman, Department of Commerce, Bangalore University, for all the advisors that she has extended, extended to organize this webinar. Thank you, madam. I thank Dr. Burlidhar, head of the department, Government First Bed College for Boys, Polar, and the member of the advisory committee. The role of the CEO is to enable the people to excel, help them to discover their own wisdom, engage themselves entirely in their work, and accept responsibilities for making change. A true visionary who is a big dream, dreamer and courage to take a decision, it is none other than our beloved Chief Education Officer of Saundarya Education Trust, Sri Kirtan Kumar Yam. I thank him for all the encouragement and support which he has extended to make the program a success. I thank management, all the management members of Saundarya Education Trust. I thank Mr. Shukmar Ganachari, moderator of today's program and also the coordinator of IPSC SIMS. Thank you, sir. I thank Professor N.P. Shigehalli and Mr. Lokesh G. Angadi, the members of Advisory Committee. I thank all the head of the department and my dear cousins. I thank all the members of the organizing committee, my departmental colleagues, Mr. Chandrapa, Mrs. Malar, Ms. Prema, Mrs. Pavitra, Mr. Afar, and my special thanks to Mr. Kaushik, who stood with me throughout the organizing of this program. I, talk, I thank all the non-teaching fraternity of Saundar Institute of Management and Science, and my special thanks to the system admins, Mr. Guru Prasad and Mr. Prasad, who has extended all the great support, in technical support in organizing this great webinar. And I also thank all the participants who are there in YouTube Live and witnessed this great session. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now the session is adjourned. Thank you.